In October of 1912, Theodore Roosevelt was on his way to give a speech in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Out of nowhere, a man shot him in the chest from five feet away. While most people would instantly be killed by a blow like this, Theodore was saved by the eyeglasses and folded copy of his speech tucked in his jacket. Welcome back to Curiosity, and today we're talking wild facts about President Teddy Roosevelt. Did he really have a tattoo? Was he actually a lawman on the Dakota frontier? Wait, was he actually a competitive boxer? And while serving in the White House? We're talking about all of this and more. He nearly died exploring an uncharted river. If there's one thing you need to know about the 26th President of the United States, it's that he loved adventure. One might call him the Indiana Jones of American politics. After losing his final presidential campaign in 1912, Teddy was not happy. He decided to let out his frustrations by heading down to South America and exploring the rainforest with his son Kermit, explorer Colonel Candido Rondon and several others. As you could imagine, this was not your ordinary vacation. The group made their way down Brazil's River of Doubt, a stream populated by piranhas and man-eating snakes. As if things weren't scary enough, cannibalistic tribes lived along the river who did not welcome outsiders. You'd think old Teddy had a death wish. Well, in many ways, he did. Teddy ventured into the South American wilderness, prepared to die. After injuring his leg trying to free two canoes, Teddy's flesh wound became infected. Falling ill to a fever, he begged his son to leave him and continue on downriver. Of course, Kermit refused to leave his father to his death, and the group made it out alive. Well, some weren't so lucky. One man died in the rapids, while another was murdered by a group member gone crazy. By the time his journey ended, Teddy reportedly lost over 50 pounds. While experts today have their doubts, the former president claimed to have explored over 600 miles of uncharted river. The river was later renamed Roosevelt River. Whether the length of his expedition is true or not, it's still pretty impressive for a man who almost lost his life. What's even crazier is that this wasn't his first brush with death. So let's get into his assassination attempt. Remember my story from a moment ago about the bullet that nearly killed Roosevelt? It's all true. Teddy was shot by a man named John Flamang Schrank in front of the Gilpatrick Hotel in Milwaukee. This was Teddy's latest stop on his campaign to run for re-election. Schrank claimed he was instructed to shoot Roosevelt by the ghost of William McKinley, the 25th US President of the United States. Roosevelt served as vice president under McKinley when he was shot to death in 1901. Teddy immediately succeeded William to become the 26th president. If you believe in miracles, Teddy Roosevelt was certainly touched by one that day. The bullet was lodged in his chest, but not before being slowed down by his eyeglass case as well as a 50-page speech he had prepared for the crowd. After Schrank was disarmed and wrestled to the ground, Teddy pleaded with the angry crowd not to have him killed. Ignoring suggestions to go to the hospital, Roosevelt instead stayed and delivered his speech with visible blood on his shirt. Luckily, the bullet did not get far enough to reach his lung. As for John Schrank, it turns out Roosevelt's plea to spare him may have actually saved his life. The crowd was so angry, some were preparing to lynch him. He was immediately examined by psychologists and brought to a hospital for the criminally insane, where he remained until his death in 1943. He went blind from boxing while president. Throughout his life, Teddy Roosevelt was an avid boxer. He picked up the sport as a child in order to defend himself from bullies. He continued studying boxing while attending Harvard University and dabbled in it throughout his adult years. During his presidency, Teddy would put on boxing matches at the White House. 
Here's where it gets really wild. He would even put the gloves on himself, competing against anyone who was willing to fight a sitting president. You can imagine this would spook anyone out of fighting. I mean, punching the president? You'd get hanged. But some professional boxers were up to the task. Teddy's boxing days came to an end when Colonel Daniel T. Moore, a member of his military aide, punched the leader so hard he went permanently blind in his left eye. While the average person would be devastated from losing their sight, Teddy seemed unfazed. In fact, he was rather relieved that it was his left eye instead of his right. If he had lost vision in his right eye, he would no longer be able to practice his shooting. That's right, old Teddy loved his guns. He also loved to hunt animals. Big animals. While it's massively frowned upon today, and for good reason, big game hunting was the norm back in Teddy's time. Right after leaving office in 1909, he went straight to East Africa, where he joined a team on a hunting safari. The team included scientists working for the Smithsonian Institution and American Museum of Natural History. The team killed over 11,000 different animals, everything from insects to giant mammals. Once the animal was killed, it would be shipped back to the US to be studied. When it came to defending his decision to hunt the creatures, Teddy was quoted as saying, I can be condemned only if the existence of the National Museum, the American Museum of Natural History, and all similar zoological institutions are to be condemned. Teddy was the first president to fly in an airplane. On October the 11th, 1910, shortly after returning from Africa, Roosevelt headed to San Luis, Missouri, where he took a flight with pilot Arch Hoxie at the controls. According to records, he was the first president to ever fly in a plane. Teddy Roosevelt would get thrills wherever he could find them. He also had a massive tattoo on his chest. Move over, rock stars. I bet you'd never have guessed that Teddy was inked up. This is back when tattoos were fairly rare on people. Those who had them would usually earn a negative reputation. Roosevelt didn't let that stop him. He got a massive tattoo of his family chest right on his chest. Of course, back in those days, tattoos were done a different way. His tattoo was done with gunpowder rather than the usual ink we use today. He climbed the Matterhorn while away on his honeymoon. After getting married in 1880, a young Teddy was on his honeymoon in the Swiss Alps. While your honeymoon is usually a time for you and your spouse, the future president found time to sneak away and climb one of the largest mountains in Europe. Talk about needing your space. He was a war hero. Teddy Roosevelt was a veteran of the Spanish-American War. He fought in one of the war's bloodiest battles at Cuba's San Juan Hill in 1898. It was here he led a charge up Kettle Hill with his legendary Rough Riders Regiment. As commander of the regiment, Teddy was the only man riding a horse during the battle. After the animal's legs were caught on barbed wire, he continued up the hill on foot. The regiment remained under fire, but reached the top of the hill. Due to their overwhelming numbers and superior firepower, the Spanish retreated. The wildest part of this whole story is that Roosevelt led the attack on his own, with no orders from his superiors to take the hill. Before heading off to war, Teddy's family had reportedly begged him to stay in Washington. But Roosevelt couldn't be convinced. He was determined to join the fighting at any cost. At this point in his life, Roosevelt was no stranger to tragedy. While he had dealt with death multiple times in his life, Teddy had unique ways of dealing with grief. One of them was moving out west. Like I said, Roosevelt loved adventure, but much of it was to distract himself from the pain of losing loved ones. 
On February the 12th, 1884, he lost his mother, Mitty, to typhoid fever, only to lose his wife, Alice Lee, to childbirth 11 hours later. Teddy, who had experienced his own bouts with illness as a young child, couldn't prepare himself for the impact of losing these two women. Teddy buried himself in his work, which at the time centered around investigating corruption in the New York City government. But this wasn't enough to escape his grief, so he moved out to the Dakota Territory to work as a cattle rancher. The men he worked alongside taught him the basics of riding, roping, and hunting. He lived in the Dakotas for the next few years, even serving as deputy sheriff. It was during this time he captured a trio of boat thieves along a frozen river, escorting them by himself to the nearest town. On the journey to their trial, he kept himself awake by reading. This was so they wouldn't have the opportunity to kill him in his sleep and escape in the night. Teddy would take his experiences in law enforcement and apply them later on in life. In 1895, he would work up to the rank of New York City Police Commissioner. There are so many fascinating people throughout history. Care to learn more? Let's keep your curiosity going with a couple more videos, shall we? Here's what you need to know. Check out The Mysterious Life and Death of Egypt's Lost Queen. Or how about The Hypnotist Who Claimed to See into the Future? Go ahead. Click one, or better yet, watch both and learn more about people of history. Which US president fascinates you the most? Let us know in the comments below.